Well, good evening viewers and welcome to round two of season four in Fair Play Racing League. And tonight, kicking us off, the field has made its way to the Jeddah Cornish circuit in Saudi Arabia. This one-of-a-kind season uh, circuit, I should say, posing a very unique challenge tonight for all the drivers with its incredibly fast corners and tight walls. Expect to see numerous drivers today struggling to master the tight turns of this circuit especially one to look out for in sector one not least of course those eagle-eyed racers out there that ha there has been a performance update this week ahead of this race so the cars and the setups will feel very different compared to last week and last time out in Bahrain our race winner last week cruiser 1872 does take to the track this week can he make it two for two for McLaren in tier three and a 100% perfect start for him. Or is there other drivers in the field tonight who can make the most of the changes from last week and take the fight to him? But of course, once again, it is my first race in the commentary box in season four, but I am joined by a familiar voice once again in TJM 1992. Good evening to you, sir. Glad to have you with me once again. I know you took part in a practice race yesterday around here with some of these guys in the field tonight. Did any of them catch your eye in particular ahead of tonight's race? Yeah, good evening. Um, pleasure to be back with you as well, Bill. First race ever. Um, always exciting. Um, yeah, practice race last night. It, it was a bit of a wee one last night. So it, it, it felt like it was um, it was the, the driver's first time with the, hand, with the new handling system in. They were still playing with setup, so it, it was hard to tell. And no one really caught my eye because I felt like they were still trying to play and just get the feel in your handling system it's uh, compared to last week to this week uh, the cars have changed massively with how the, the tires work and um the, the gear ratios and engine torque and um people's setups that have been working on over the past week were thrown out the window because the, the, the cars become a bit more under stevie um so I, I just felt like last night the guys were just trying to get a grip of how the cars feel now it's definitely not the track you really want to go to uh, following a performance update. This one is no real baseline for the drivers really to go off, of course. It's, it's one of the newer tracks as well on the calendar. I know it's been around on the last game and, of course, it's here now as well. But it's still not one the drivers are particularly familiar with. So it will obviously change how people drive this week compared to last. And, I mean, in terms of the update as well, I think the handling changes kind of messed around with tyre temperatures and setups and drivers having to run different kinds of pressures it's just to try and keep the tyre temperatures down and this circuit with its long fast corners TJ I imagine that the tyre temperatures will go through the roof no matter what you're trying to do to cool them down yeah definitely um, as you mentioned it's 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 very quick circuit um, and there's some really sharp corners in there that you can take really quickly so um, I'd be shocked if anyone's running high temperatures around there. I, I would expect most drivers to be running really low temperatures. Um, but as you said, even with low tyre pressures, um, it's going to be so hard to keep them temperatures under control. One driver that's done a decent job of it so far is Callum8824. Is his first race this week? I'm not 100% sure on that one, but he has crossed the line with a 130.1 then to put the marker down for the rest of the field out there early and putting a decent time in early on as well TJ. Yeah, um, I think it came on my two face last week, I can't remember. Um, but even so, it's, it's, it's a decent time that is to put straight on the board. Um, I think that's quicker than most people's time trials currently. Um, so there's nothing to be ashamed of there. Just trying to pull up now the race results from last week as we ride with Billy Bum at the moment in the Aston Martin. The reflections flying off that Aston Martin TJ, which would be very glad to, <laughs> glad to go with um, <laughs> this week in tier two as he invalidates there uh, through sector two. So we'll have to go round again. Here is a driver that did race last week, Royalist in the Williams. Struggling last time out, not managing to. The race and only qualifying P17 as well. So Williams does need to try and find a bit of pace this week. The circuit might just go a little bit closer to his driving style. Diamond then crosses the line with a 129.9 from him, then great lap early on, TJ. 
obviously I didn't want to pick him up too much, being in a, the Ferrari garage, uh, along with myself, but I did notice that in the, uh, in the social race, well, social slash practice race that we had yesterday, he did have some pace. I think a lot of drivers are noticing that, and especially in Bahrain as well. P2 last week, up six places, I only managed to qualify P8, so is he working on that one lap pace, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mentioned Simon last week when we interviewed him that um, he certainly carries form through from um, season three and certainly got season four after a really good start. And yeah, he is catching a lot of drivers' eyes. And I think if he can work on that one, um, that one pace, the one lap pace, he he is a real contender for the championship this year. Um, it's going to take a lot to beat him. Ferrari's sake anyway, Panic End has lost it in the middle of sector one. We just rode on board with Maxi there and you can see here's Alfa Romeo backwards in the wall. So easy to lose it there, of course, coming out of that turn, turn three, turn four, where you're just riding the fourth gear and you have to change up so quickly to avoid losing the back end. And unfortunately, he hasn't done that and he will start the race in P19. We don't have a full grid at the moment. I thought we did tonight, but we don't. Um, so he will start right the race later on. Yeah, that's a shame for Hands. Um We do know he's strong, so hopefully he'll get his head down the race. Um, but maybe he hasn't been trying a new handling setup and uh, well, a new handling um, features, and the understeer just caught him out as well. Um, I, I think that will be a massive um, play in some of these guys' books, especially if I haven't realised um, there's been a the patch for handling. Traffic early on in the session, Maxi has to take a couple of bites out of the corner, then that final corner, a little bit tighter this year of course compared to last season, but he has managed to get round it in the end, that comes up and over the line, it's only four for him at the moment, a second of Diamond's pace as it stands, we know he has got pace though, of course, qualifying in the top three last week, so expect to see a better lap from him second time around. Yeah, um, Maxi was really unfortunate last week. Um, last week he had a fantastic quality, um, had a bit of an instant down to turn one, um, but then just purely had an instant filled session. Um, he still come back and recovered pretty well. I think he finished P8 to P7 from my memory, um, but he'll be wanting to bounce back definitely for from last week and showing why he, he qualified so high in the grip. Does have a bit of pace about him, and there was a lot of talk pre season about him perhaps being in tier two. But he has found himself in tier three, then so probably has to try and prove his worth. And perhaps he thought he should be in tier two with the pace that he has, but at least two races in. Well, we haven't seen him so far this season. His last, uh, last year's runners up, uh, runner up, I should say, Tanas hasn't raced so far. He's here now, though, and he's in the Red Bull. And he's on a lap at the moment, he's kept it very clean so far, TJ, but a lot of people are tipping uh, Tadas this week uh, to, to pull it out of the bag, really, perhaps fight for the win. Yeah, he's, he's starting the back throw, as you say, he didn't race last week's first time we've seen him um, in the Red Bull this year. Um, as we watch him come over the line and set to 131-1, which he, I imagine would be very disappointed with. Um, but it's, it's probably a good luck to get on the board, and especially around here. Um, but you'll definitely want to try and improve on that, especially if you want to prove to people that he's a championship contender this year. Yeah, it's definitely, well, here's Mongo, who's currently, I think, on in lap. Hasn't put a time on the board just yet. Uh, with Howard Fishsticks, who last season in Tier 2 did, did quite well around the Jedi, I believe. And finds himself in Tier 3 this season, unfortunately for him. It's, perhaps it's just the nature of how close the tiers are, but... Expect him to definitely be up there, considering I think, I think he finished in the top six last season, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, um, I remember back with Fish Sticks last year. Um, I was close to the instant room, unfortunately. Um, he managed to get away from it, and I picked some damage up, but he, um, yeah, he was very quick around here. Um, and yeah, he'll be expecting me up there again, um, hopefully, um, pull another good result up like he did last weekend, helping the, the Mercedes construct the challenge. Mercedes once again for season four, as I mentioned, Mongo in the Red Bull once again for season four as well. So they can't seem to shift their teams, even 
changing into the new season. But Fishnitz is going to cross the line now, and it is a 130.9. They just took him behind his teammate, who's currently in P4. There. So that's four and five for Mercedes at the moment, and very similar match on times as well. As they let it flag out just down at the end of the uh, the paper clip. It's cool. Uh, left hand, left hand at the end of sector one. Oh, no, it's a red ball round, but it has carried on. So no more retirements following the panic and retiring early on. Yep, um, I'm just on board Voilist here, who's coming around the final corner now. Um, takes it very nicely. Hits the curb, which is nice. The RS wide open will be going down to the line. Um, and manages to set himself uh, a 1315. Pretty reasonable compared to everyone else, probably. Um, I think you've touched on him already with his, with his pace and how he did last week. And he did have a disappointing qualifying, but in the race, he had a flyer. Uh, but then unfortunately had a moment which just um, in split in sector two, I believe, and took himself out. So um, if he shows the pace like he did last week, he'll, he'll definitely be in for a good shot for the top ten here. Yeah, only hope. Anyway, Mr. Raspberry in his first race in Fair Play Racing League, struggling at the moment with track limits with sector one, kissing the wall for good measure as well. And he has invalidated this lap then, so he will need to go around. Again, to get a time on the board then, and closely following uh, Royalist over the line was T-Jerk, who hasn't put a representative time on the board just yet. A 47.3 from him. He'll need to go down again. And skip it as well. Let's keep the track limits uh, at the end of Sector 1. A, uh, a 34.3 from Sector 1, not too bad at the moment. I wasn't here last week, like I said, CJ with uh, skip it. I don't think he was here either, was he? And, I'm surprised to see him running around so late in qualifying after last season. Uh, he doesn't like to take part in qualifying usually, but he's doing get his best here. And hopefully he can try and get through to Q2 this time around. Yeah, I, I can't remember seeing him last week. And yeah, as we learnt from last year, he, he normally set a lap and just went to pits and retired. And obviously the driver's choice starts in the back of the grid. Um, but hopefully we'll see him attempting to put a decent lap in and going through to Q2 this season. Um, as I am I'm bold with Scott when coming on the far set corner as well. Getting a bit of a slip screen from T Jerk here. Um, see if that helps him out coming down to the line now. Um, EOS wide open. Crossing that line very nicely through the pit lane. And it's only 130.8. Yeah, pressing P4 at the moment just ahead of those Mercs now down to 5th and 6th. Give it time on 132.8. Still just over five tenths back from David Lowface in the P13. His closest challenger really cut adrift from those drivers that have put a time on the board. And FPR Locker as well, putting a time in to go ninth fastest with a 131.7. Oh no, he did last race last week. He did. Um, as Mr. Rasby has dropped it on track coming up the pay clip. I'm just trying to go on board. I think Scotsman will see it before anyone else. Yeah, it looks like from what we've seen there, he's tried to hit the exit and the news has got a bit loose on him and he's spun down and smacked the wall. Interesting that he's ended up in that wall as opposed to the inside one. Um, and he's bounced across the circuit, of course, but that's not how he would have wanted his first race a qualifying session in FPRL to go. And he will start then P18 moment as it stands without penalties or anyone else joining and crashing whatever else goes on it is currently 19th and 18th and for Anakin and Mr. Raspberry at the moment then skim it on and in that I don't even want to say we're gonna go with Will Lou I don't know Will Lou 78 let's call him Will yeah we'll call him Will we'll call him Will <laughs> we'll, go with, we'll go with Will <laughs> he doesn't like a good Will um at the moment on the lap, but anyway, just under a 10 quicker through sector one, then just behind his teammate Cruiser at the moment, then. So Cruiser not able to show the pace that perhaps we expected to see from him this week at the moment, but he hasn't. Because it's a long lap here, TJ, and with the ERS as well, obviously in this game, you don't get enough for a second push lap, so all these drivers really are playing with the jeopardy then. That they know that if they get it wrong and invalidate or, or perhaps, you know, clip a wall here or there, and then take the punishment of having to go back around once again. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be a very 
um, harsh track for the drivers this, this time around, especially in quality. Um, as you mentioned, the IRS is, a, is key. Um, and if, especially if you take your front and hit the wall or make a mistake through sector two, you definitely haven't got time to try and regain any of our um, ERS as we've got a pass stop from track. Scotsman there an issue coming through sector two. Looks like he's still going now. Just trying to see if he's lost any part of that front wing. He looks like he's got away with it for now. And as that was going on, Will cross the line then. Eighth fastest for him, 31-3. Big improvement then. So the track coming to the drivers now. And clearly able to find a good seven tenths there in terms of lap time. And he should be through to the second part of qualifying with that. Then as Skivid retires and in the pit lane. Surely that 32-8 will not be enough to make it through. Provided one of the drivers behind puts in a half-decent effort on the board. So perhaps give it joining Mr. Raspberry and Panic End out then in Q1. Two minutes left on the clock, of course. Still, the driver's under immense pressure to get that time down. Uh, but on that basis, I think we might only lose one more then, TJ. And who do you fancy to be at this point? Um... I imagine it is going to be Mongo. He, I've just been on board with him, he's struggling, he invalidates his previous lap and he's just taking turn while and invalidates it again. I'm not sure whether he's got the time to come back on the track again. It's, it'll be very close, I think. I think he's got to try to save his ERS at this point, so Mongo could be, could be on his way out in Q1, which would be a, a shock for the Red Bull driver. Maybe a huge shock for the man that qualified P6 last week. Perhaps not getting out of Q1 here, but he has got a minute and 15 seconds to get. Minute 10 now to get back around the track and try and get a time, decent time on the board, I should say. As TJ then around the final corner, it's been a very steady lap for him. It doesn't look like it's going to be quick enough either. Crosses the line, it's a 133-3. 15th then from the house. Definitely not quick enough, really, as long as those behind him can get that time on the board. As I said, I'm not good now. Coming through sector two, then I'm looking to complete the lap. He, but he's back off his he's lap. backed out of it as well. So the pressure really getting into the drivers here, CJ, as you'd expect, maybe. But it's anyone's guess as to who's going to be dropping out in this part of qualifying. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, it'll be a massive shot for either these two drivers in the bottom. Bottom now, Mongo and I'm not good to be going, but um, we'll see what they can do now. Mongo's just crossing the line now and starting his lap once again. But then Ty is a free lap hold now, so we'll see what they're getting. And um, I'll rather board through the if they can turn one and two pretty nicely here. About to come through the very tricky bit of sector one. I don't want to curse the driver at all at this point, but he's taking the corners very nicely. Holding the throttle very good. Ooh, oh, he hasn't got a ton of tail. Never know, he got wide off track and comes straight back on. TJ is coming well, three tenths up at the moment, TJ, so that's not going to be enough to be, uh, beat Skivid as it stands. He's going to have to have a mental final sector here. He is just about to come through the final corner. And it is really here between TJ. I don't think I'm not good's going to get through here either. He's in the wall at the end of sector one, so he's at a problem too. Can TJ take himself out of the danger zone? Not quite then, so it's all down to Mongo and what he can do here. Yeah, Mongo had a 34 sector, he had a 34, 6 in sector 1. So 1 of all, 5 in sector 2, 18, 18 and a half seconds quicker. So he's got, a, he's got a really decent sector 3 here. And not many corners for a sector, obviously, just the ass wide open, puts the floor. Trying to pick your break point off this very fast um, upcoming corner. Takes it nicely, perhaps a bit too tight in the corner, but he still goes on pretty nicely. DRS wide open, you know, cross across the pit lane line. I think he's too and slow, and he is. Oh, oh, oh. by un just under a second as well. Then, so perhaps that cautious final lap didn't seem very quick at all there towards the end of the lap. I don't know if the pressure just got to him there then, but the Red Bull driver then is perhaps the biggest shock going out in this part of qualifying in Q1 in Q, uh, after his Q3 appearance last week then not even close really it was it in the end 8 tenths the gap then to TJ who just sneaks through in the end with Skivid as well who, who put that lap on the board TJ which we said at the time was 
so far, he is still so far back off the rest of the pack. Eight tenths, the difference between him and Cruiser and P13, but it's still enough to get him through. And, well, as I mentioned, that is the bottom four then. Yeah, massive shot for Mongo and what good to be going up so really. Especially with Panic End as well. I mean, you know, for these four drivers, you'd want to expect them to see how go on Q1. Um, as you mentioned, Skivvy Ty's start probably for the last two seasons, to be honest. But we know he's going to be starting P15 at, at least if he decides to come off and set to lap. So he'll be over the moon with that. Um, but massive concern for Cruiser there, who looks miles off the pace as well compared to last week. Definitely needs to find a bit of time throughout the qualifying sessions. Perhaps with a bit of practice, that confidence might come to him and the lap time too, though. But there is your classification then. At the end of Q1, it is Diamond then taking the fastest time in that session, but closely followed then by Callum on his FPRL debut, looking then to perhaps take the fight to the front of the field already in his first race. Espenio, nice to have him back to top three once again. I know he had a decent race here not too long ago as well. Maxi in P4 with his teammate just behind him in P5. It's Scotsman P6, Tadas P7, Will in P8, Royalist P9, Locker rounding off the top 10. And then as we mentioned, the bottom four then of Mongo, I'm not good, Mr. Raspberry and Panic End with the latter two putting it in the wall then about midway through that first part of qualifying. Yep, um... Bit of a mix Q1 there, I think, compared to last week. The, the, the group was definitely a lot closer last week, but I think it's mainly Jared, it's, it's not the track that's causing the issue here. Um, obviously, drivers will need to really put their heads down now and put a, a decent lap in, especially if you want to get through to Q2, Q3 here. Um, so, pressure back on, especially for them. I don't know, top, bottom five or six that, that were there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what you can do here. Yeah, straight into Q2 then, and I've just had word, TJ, in the Discord that um, Callum, who was P2 in that session, uh, thought it was short qualifying. So I don't know how many different sets of tyres he used <laughs> to, put that, to put that time in, uh, but he's going to have to do it all again um, in this session. And Q3, of course. Uh, should he make it there now? Um, but yeah, a bit of confusion there. Might be disappointed. That one. Uh, but the driver said, <laughs> going us out uh, at the early part of Q2, TJ. Uh, did something you um, to say there? I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the uh, the Twitch chat and it's there, so our viewers back in there. Um, Adrian's um, redeemed us a drink. So we've got to take a drink at some point, as tall as we need to. Um, however, Espanio is going to have a new follower. I've, now, I've not seen it before, but he's called. That's Pladio, 94. That's, that is the worst pronunciation I've ever heard of the As word. Plado? I don't know. Aspal Aspaldo. Know. <laughs> As Aspaldo, As that, that'll do. No, no, he's, he's now Aspladio. <laughs> Aspladio, we'll As take that, yeah. Aspladio. That's, yeah, that's... Oh, God, TJ. Some of your pronunciations, they're, uh, they're a bit creative it's, sometimes. It, it's, it's it's the Stokey Scouse accent, mate. I'll keep playing on that. Yeah. Spaldo. Yeah. Well, Aspaldo wants to see Aspenio out on track. I know we don't say Aspenio right either. <laughs> well, we've, we've been saying it like that for a whole season, so we're not about to change. But he is out on track, and he did a very good time in Q1 to make it through. And P3 in that early part of qualifying. Back this week, of course, fan favourite, as quite rightly said, uh, Aspenio. I think his actual name is James Aspen, but. Go with a spenio. Don't know where that nickname come from. No idea. No idea. Uh, but he's not going to be the first driver to put us on a flying lap. It is this man in the Ferrari then. Diamond. Top form at the moment so far through qualifying. Perhaps running the car a little bit low to the ground there. Bottoming out through the first couple of corners then. And looking then for a decent first sector. It'll probably help if I show you what lap time he's doing. There you go. And now you can see for yourselves just how good the lap time is. It looks like really cocked up then. In sector one at the moment. Letting off the thrust a little bit inconsistent there with the thrust. not quite holding it as smoothly as he might have liked. It's 32.9 per sector, so not a bad time at all there. And 
his teammate David Lofes just going to round us off I think coming through the final corner now then so the field in a Ferrari sandwich and apart from those four drivers still in the pits TJ perhaps they're just waiting then to see if any of the drivers struggle and up crashing it out early on because obviously the pressure eases with the more drivers that don't put a time on the ball yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's very come from the guys that still on the pits to, to be sat there and see what's going on. Um, you know, I, I don't expect Skivvy to come out to be honest, um, but Fish Sticks and um, Locker sitting in the pits, that's very fun for themselves. Um, try to bit of traffic maybe yeah, and see what's going on. Um, this Diamond is taking the final corner out. Uh, DRS wide open. Being a very mixture set of lines coming through but he sets a 129.7 quick and his Q1 time um, by about two temps and um, no doubt that will see him safely through I think. Yeah that will definitely see him safely through Royalist then putting the time on the board at a 131.7 a beautiful corner cut there from Willy Bum then to invalidate through the final sector and Callum going even quicker then oh. <laughs> with a 129.5 great lap from him then much quicker than his Q1 time perhaps lying to us all a little bit and has got some tyres lying around somewhere in that Alpine garage and has put them on that Alpine to go P1 then by just under just over I should say a tenth to Diamond and David, oh David Olfe <laughs> I don't know what he was doing there <laughs> goes straight across the corner I think we forgot but what a curb was there, as he was nearly shot himself <laughs> into the wall. That's definitely validation uh, for him then. So it looks like at the moment then for the early parts of qualifying TJ, as we're watching Scotsman come through the final sector now on his lap anyway, that we are going to have a shootout between Callum and Diamond for pole position. Yeah, definitely. Um, Diamond probably wouldn't be expecting this. You know, we, we haven't seen Callum race at all. I think he did the social last night. It definitely wasn't this quick. This quick, or I don't remember him this quick. Um, and Scotsman, once again, is off the pace with a 131.2. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's going to take a lot to catch the, the top two drivers here, I think. Yep, can any of the other drivers out there take it to them? Espenio, who we know has got pace, Maxi too, uh, can still can't even get within the 129s as it stands. So Callum and Diamond, the only drivers to get into the 129s so far then. And anybody join them before the end of the session will be very conservative there on the curbs and the corner cutting, taking no risks there. Getting a bit of a toe here from the driver in front, conveniently his teammate, but is he going to get in the way here through the final corner? He is. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't very nice by Cruiser there. He seemed to park his car a little bit on the racing line for his teammate. He comes into the pit as well, Cruiser. Perhaps the toe not quite well orchestrated enough there, but he does go quicker than his teammate. A 131.0 P5 then, but he might need to go quicker than that, TJ. I'm not too sure what the cutoff might be uh, here as TJ trolling around with a broken front wing. Um, but do you know what... Based on the Q1 times, do you know what the, uh, the cutoff might be in this session? Um... I'm probably going to say a, a low 131 um, last. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm going to go for one, a low 131. Um, you know, based off times that going up, up now in Q1 times. I, I think anyone that's a 139 down would be fine. Anyone above it would probably want to, to definitely improve the times. Um, I mean, it's, it's very close between fish sticks all the way down to Scotsman currently, so um, yeah, I think they'll all want to definitely run again and try and prove the times. Yeah, well, fish sticks put a time on the board then to go with the 130.8, so that seems like a good baseline then to get yourself through into Q3. It's four tenths so in his teammate. I, mean, I know he had such a competitive qualifying session uh, last time out as Tadas invalidates them from sector one on his first flying run, so he'll have to trundle around and go again but we had such a, a tight session didn't we I think in qualifying last week and the times here are so spread at the moment we saw us big gaps in Q1 we're seeing it again here at the moment between 1st and 11th there's, there's kind of pockets of drivers up and down the timing screen it's just people putting the practice in and people that are just struggling with this new handling update um yeah I think so I think a lot of these drivers would have been practicing Pretty much after their race with a jealous setup that was pre-patch 
Um, and I don't think a lot of the drivers have been able to have much factor in the new handling system in. If they haven't adjusted the setups to, to counteract the understeer that's arrived now, um, yeah, I think I think that might be playing a bit of a part. But I also as well think that Jed is, um, if you don't nail sector one, um, it's hard to gain any time through the remaining sectors. Because um, as, as we know, it's, it's pretty much straight through sectors two and three. Um, so sector one's uh, your sector where you really make, make or break your lap, to be honest. And I know a lot of drivers on the wheel definitely prefer this circuit to those on the pad, especially because of that section one, like he said, so perhaps we're seeing a little bit of that uh, factor in here as well. Uh, not a lot going on the track at the moment. Espeño has come back out for another lap, even though he's safe, perhaps looking to get a bit more practice in for his Q3 appearance. Uh, T-Jerk is out there on an outlap too, but there is a driver on a flying lap and it is Tadasen looking to get another bite at the cherry on this set of tyres. Yeah, um, he's, I mean it says it's on a fresh set, but I, I can't remember him coming in and changing his tyres, but um, yeah, Tadas is really struggling currently, um, his first race of, of the season, um, perhaps been caught up by the handling update as well, and uh, yeah, I think, I, I, I think you'll be lucky to get through to Q1 at this moment in time, but we'll ride on and see what you can do through um, the this remaining sector, 2 and 3. Um, seems to that corner very nice, the car doesn't look like it's complaining too much. Um, DRS wide open now and we'll see what sector time he sets in a minute. And it's a 1026 purple sector buffing, that might be a personal sector rather than an overall purple sector. Um, taking sector 3 now. Just this massive straight with a, with a long windy corner. He takes out his braking zone for the final corner shortly. Breaks about the 100 meter board. Takes the corner very nicely. Mike kiss to get touches the curb on the outside to ride it. DRS wide open again. Butting across the pit lane line on so slightly. And a 130.9. Yeah, so really on the cusp there from Tanas P6 at the moment with that 130.9, but there's still some very quick drivers get to put their fastest times on the board then so with four minutes 40 left on the stopwatch we might need to come in again and quickly get back around to cover off any threat from those behind there. Uh, T-Jerk did get on that fly lap it's not a phenomenal first sector to be honest a 34-3 was about a second down on Tadas and again through second the second sector he's He's over a second down on what Tadas did then, so this time perhaps not going to be setting the time screens alight unless he finds maybe a spare battery pack down these last couple of straights. Uh, coming around the final corner now. Smooth an entry there, not, not too bad for the final corner in terms of traction neither, but he's not perhaps taking it to the line, but does cross the line with a 132.2 then. 12 fastest. At the moment, only ahead of FPR Locker, who's in P13 still. Yep, I was just on board with... Uh, he wasn't on board with... I was on board with Skivied, and he was very lucky not to be going out through sector 1. He had, a, he had a spun down Scotsman, who managed to spin it, come out one of the corners. Very lucky to avoid him, but still manages to keep the lap in. Um, so that's a pretty decent sector 1 of 33.8. Um, so we'll see where he can throughout. Um, looking like the car is very nicely plenty for him still. Um, coming out to the DRS line in sector two. Flat out through these very, uh, they're not tight corners, but they're very quick corners. Can't really see what's going on behind him. A 103 through sector two goes wide. He's very lucky to invalidate his lap there, to be honest. And did well to keep the car from not, um, well, the rear not complaining there, but was definitely lost some time doing that move so we'll see what you can do but I don't think he's going to set the, the board alight now at this particular time. Coming around the final corner now, rides the curb, DRS wide open, straight down to the finish line in sector 1, 32 8 and puts in P13. Yeah, matches that time then of FPR Locker just going slightly ahead of the Aston Martin and into P13. Two and a half minutes now left on the clock. It'll be Hard to see how he gets around and manages to put a quicker time on the board then so that might be the best we see from the Williams driver. Nonetheless at the moment here's Willy Bummer driver who has struggled then so far this season really with pace, didn't quite 
find his best form last time out in Bahrain. And perhaps has struggled so far in qualifying here, perhaps just not quite used to these new cars yet. Crosses the line, and it's P10, a 131.5 from him then in that Aston Martin. His teammate now bottom of the timing screen on the left-hand side. And TJ, you have to say he's very much at risk at that time. Yeah, I, I can't see how he goes through that time. He's got to be very lucky and hope some of the drivers behind him don't set a quicker lap. Um, Royalist is the only struggle here, I think. He's invalid to his lap currently. Give he's on his way back around, but I don't, he's, he's going to pit, so he won't be set a quicker lap. And Locker's just coming down the fact he's just taking the final call. Now, DRS wide open, so we'll see what the Aston Martin driver's got here. And jumps to P5 at 130.6. And knocks his teammate in. Knocks his teammate out provisionally. Yeah, it was a cracking time uh, on the lap, really, from sector two. He was already over second up on his previous best effort. So followed up by a great final sector, and he'll find himself in in Q3 for the first time this season. Five at the moment on that timing screen, and Royalist, as you mentioned, has invalidated them. So we'll look to have saved the RS. Hopefully, he's got about fifty-four percent. As he starts the lap, so in a hurry to make it to the line. Fuel light flashing as well, so it'll be interesting to see if he's got enough fuel to make it there too. Scotsman now retiring in the pit lane, it seems, in 10th place. Um, so, but he won't going to improve on that either, so now he's a driver at risk. And Willy Bum into the pits then, so he won't be able to improve and get himself through to the final part of qualifying, along with Skirid then. And with TJ already out, we know three of the drivers that's definitely going to be out in this part of qualifying. But can Royalist or David Longface lift themselves now out of the drop zone? Yeah, I'm on board with David and he was almost four attempts up through sector one. So he is, he could be knocking Scotsman out here if he keeps it nice and clean from the main sectors. Went through a tricky corner in sector two. Car nice and planted. Rides a bit of third down. Looking up to validate it. And but continues on round and... DRS wide open is just taking these long windy corners at high speed, picking out his brick in his own mate, we'll see what his delta is. He's lost a bit of time, still two attempts up to him, he's found a couple of attempts for his final sector. DRS wide open, foot down to the ground, and he'll be looking now to pick his breaking points out about the 150, 100 metre um, board. Slams the brakes on, brings the car to a halt, he's coming around the corner, decides not to ride the curb on the outside. DRS wide open as well, again, cutting the pit lane very nicely, and he's 7 tenths on putting off P8, well a fantastic lap from Ferrari driver. And that puts Scotsman then down into P11, Royalist unable to improve unfortunately then, so we'll take no further part in qualifying. And that is your bottom 5 then, Cruiser through by the skin of his teeth in the end. The pace from last week evaporating slightly there from the McLaren boys really with Will and Cruiser, P9 and P10, but they're through to the final part of qualifying, so we'll get a chance to prove themselves there. But those drivers that aren't joining us in that session on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see there, FBR or Scotsman, Willy Bum, Royalist, T-Jerk and Skibbit then all out in the second part of qualifying. Perhaps the talking point should be at the other end. That's what we confirmed earlier with that fight between the top two at the moment. Callum and Diamond then looking like it's going to be a straight shootout for ball between them unless someone somewhere. Yeah, definitely based on what we've seen so far. I don't think either one's got the, the pace to match them, so we'll see what them two drivers can do. Um, but also, I think that another major talking point there, Scott's went out in Q2 with, with his pace he showed last week and challenging for the front. And, Really coming back to live during the race as well. To be going out in Q2 was a bit of a nightmare for the Haas driver, especially on the track where it could be hard to overtake it. It's about just keeping yourself nice and clean throughout the race now. Yep, it definitely is. And there's your full qualification then for the second part of qualifying. As you mentioned, the fight between Callum and Diamond at the top end of the field, but can Espenio, Maxi, or Locker, who found some pace there in that Q2 session, find a lap to challenge them for the front row? It's Fishstix, Tadas, David Lowface, Will, and Cruiser, the McLarens running off the top 10. I've already mentioned the bottom five that have left us then. And Willy Bum then, TJ, 
was one of the guys last season that was almost a sure bet for Q3, but he hasn't made Q3 yet so far this season. What does he need to do to try and find himself in the final part of qualifying in one of these races? Um, I think obviously he just needs to play his head down and get a bit of practice on the cars. Um, I don't think he's had the game for long. Um, and yeah, I think he just needs to get his head down, get used to how the cars handle. Obviously, it wants to help that he was practicing with the cars last week, and all of a sudden they've changed again, which doesn't help you as a driver. Um, so yeah, just just getting your head down, putting that practice in, getting a bit of confidence in the car. Um, and who knows, we, we could see him a future Q3 in Australia next week. Yep, fingers crossed for his sake anyway, but here we are then in the final part of qualifying. The top 10 shoots out now then, and of course, as everyone knows, this season, these drivers will get another set of soft tyres. You get so many soft tyres now in qualifying. It's, uh, of course, you don't get that set of mediums, do you? You get a set of softs instead, but see, so you only see the fastest laps possible in every session. Be interesting to see who saved the tyres and has Callum got any tyres then? That's that's the biggest question. <laughs> because supposedly he didn't realise that we weren't running uh, short qualifying. So has he got the tyres then to put a lap on the board? They they're looking nice and shiny. So maybe this is a new set, but we'll wait and see. Um, but it doesn't surprise me to see him out so early. Um, and leading the pack round for the, the first um, qualifying lap of Q3. Um, be interesting to see if he can, if he can go quicker than he's to be two times of a 29.5. Um, definitely raising some eyebrows um, for some of the Q3 guys here for definite. Um, and yeah, we'll wait to see what the Elton driver can do. On to the first set of laps. Interestingly enough, David Lowface will and FPR Loco staying in the pits and perhaps using slightly more tyres than the rest of those out there. Uh, of course, it's such a long outlap here as well. Um, uh, it does take a while if you want to get a, a couple of runs in. So, Loco and David Lowface still in the pits then. So, if they choose to come out now, they will really be a hindrance to those drivers about to start their flying laps. And here goes Callerman at the front of the field, about to take us on the first flying lap of the session. Yep, um, all the way down to turn one, picks, or picking a break point out, takes it very nice, it's the curves, just help pin the car around, and um, rides the curves very nicely there for that turn. Looks to break a bit early here, you can cut the corner very nicely here, which he's demonstrated very well there, um, about uh, keeping, your, keeping your focus on your throttle control through this, through this very tricky set of sector one here. Do, demonstrating very nice how to keep it within track limits and buying the curbs all the way round. Um, I haven't got a sector times up, so I can't tell you what he's doing currently. 32 uh, 8 for the first it's, sector. Yeah, 32 8 is good, good for a sector. <laughs> um, the car looks very planted for the Alpine driver. Um, looks like he's pulled a bit of practice, definitely pulled a lot of practice in. Um, last of your major points on the track where you, you've got to think about it. Very lucky not to get track limits there, personally, um, but takes the curve very nicely. DRS wide open, foot to the floor, just keep it very nice and tight and tight for these corners. Uh, 101.5 through sector 2, which is which is also another fantastic sector there. DRS wide open, foot to the floor, taking this long windy turn. Thinking about where his braking point is on the last corner, probably about the 100 metre board as we've seen from other drivers. Slams the brakes on, brings the car to a nice halt, provides the curb on the exit. DRS wide open, it's just all the way to the finish line now, and we'll see what he sets. A 129.2, so he goes even quicker than his Q3 time here. Yeah, Q2 great. Time, great lap from him, and it was Diamond that was going to close and follow him over the line, and he's half a second off then, so he can't get anywhere near that 29.2 at the moment. And as we were riding with Callum, you could see how much of a good lap it was, hitting all the braking zones at the right point, turning in when he should be. And he's been rewarded with a fantastic lap then there's going to be a real stretch for anyone to beat now in this session then and i think it's cruiser that's coming to set us a lap time next a 103 2 then through that sector two cut off and as we know that's nowhere near the front running pace but he'll be looking then to perhaps try and pip himself maybe onto the third row again this week coming up and over the line now and it's a 131 4 from him and he has been about that pace 
Throughout the entire qualifying so far, the low 31s is all he can manage this week so far. His teammate Will's going a bit better at the moment though. He's about 8 tenths off Callum's time at the moment, so perhaps looking low 30s here, depending on this final sector. And this curve, it, it is a curve, but it isn't really a curve. It doesn't really affect the cars at all there out of the final corner. Coming across the line now, it is 130.3 then. P4 for Will initially, and a great time from him, and perhaps excelling where his teammate's struggling. Yeah, definitely. Um, one driver who should really big up here is Espenio, who is only two tenths behind Diamond, so the, the Alpha May driver is finding pace, um, as we've seen come back into the pits now. Um, so perhaps Diamond could be challenging for P2 here. Um, I don't think Diamond's got the pace to match. I don't think either of these two drivers got the pace to match them um, currently, um, compared to the times of setting at the moment. Um, as we are, um, as Talas and Locke are all, all going around to the lock, but Locke seems ever so close to the back of um, Talas here. He's going to hope Talas has got a bit of pace to pull away from him. McLaren very cleverly getting out of the way there on the exit of that paperclip corner. And Talas in through. Oh, and he's lost the back end. And as he avoided putting it in the wall, just about a big swap with there, though, from Talas. Mid corner, just completely lost the rear of the car. Just turned in the car, did not want to get to the road. And that is his lap route, and surely he'll be into the pits now for another set of tyres. Yep, definitely. I also think that put Locker off as he went wide through that, didn't, that corner, didn't to validate it, but was it set, only a set of 103 through sector 2, which is probably about a second slower than we've seen from the Aston Martin driver. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if he does set this time or not. Which he is going to set it. Yeah, it's 1319, which uh, doesn't surprise me there. I, I think that's how that spin did really affect him. He's invalidated turn one as well. Interesting that he actually finished that lap, of course. He didn't quite have a delta to hand, so he wouldn't have known if he was massively improving or not, unless he was keeping an eye on the sector times. But there he has finished the lap. Five minutes left on the clock. Still time to get around and get another set of tyres on. But that is, TJ, you, you mentioned at the start of that lap that that is the risk you run when you run so close to the car in front. If they do have an incident like that, it could have been much worse than that incident for Locker. He could have kicked him up in that spin or anything. But that's why you've got to leave space when you're starting your flying laps. If something like that happens, let alone the drag coming across from the car in front, but especially round here, if he hits the wall, Locker could be a passenger in a crash. Yeah, definitely. Um, and hopefully he's learned his lesson, so when he does come back in, he'll leave himself some space for his next lap. Um, but yeah, as you say, especially on a street circuit like this, where you can't really see what's happening on the next corner. Um, if it was on a corner where you, know, you perhaps couldn't see, yeah, it could have been end game for, for Locker there. So hopefully Aston Martin drivers learns. Um, as a spin, yeah, it was a bit off the sink here. He's gone early. Perhaps he can go quick on these set of tyres and perhaps go another set ready if he can't. Um, just crossing the line now and on the way down to turn one. Yeah, it's very early from the Akameo. Max, he's joined him too in coming out uh, quite early on. The rest of the class just trickling now out of the pits. Perhaps thinking that, you know, if they do invalidate on that first run, they can back off and get another time in on these tyres. But let's hope Espenio here doesn't come into traffic. Uh, at the end, it's a really sector two if he catches up these cars. Oh, he's gone very wide there and invalidated his first run. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll back off now and try and get another time in on that same set of tyres. Yep, definitely. As Mags is just starting his um, next lap as well, taking turns one and two very nicely, riding the curve. Perhaps goes a bit wide there in the exit of turn two, but keeps it nice and clean still. Cars planted as we come to this very tricky sector in, sector in turn one. Um, the sector one side, um, keeping it very nice, belt control very nice. Goes a bit wide there, we'll keep it track limits again. Um, does what Talas couldn't do and keeps it within track limits, doesn't go wide, and uh, he is half a tenth quicker through sector one. He's not really setting the times um, time and time alike currently, but see if he had this issue through sectors 2 and 3 perhaps to claw some more time back he picks his breaking point out of this very tricky corner where the rear can step out on you and he invalidates by going a bit too greedy on the curb yeah much 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 greediness there from Magazine. 
He didn't quite get all four wheels off the, uh, the track, but it was close enough. I, I think, in all honesty, I don't think he was going to improve on that lap, so perhaps he'll back off then and look to go again. Three drivers yet to put a time on the board. David Lowface, Tadas and Fishdix. Tadas on his out lap, David's cruising round on a lap, but Fishdix here is looking to go for it then, TJ. And, and last week's pole sitter has not shown the pace here that perhaps he might have wanted to, considering what we knew he did in Tier 2 last season and what he could do last week as well. Perhaps just hasn't found the pace with this new handling model just yet. Yeah, that's something I can point down to. Um, like I said, handling models completely changed it. The, the guys are suffering a lot more on this year. Um, the tax setups have completely changed, and perhaps he just got a, a setup that is a little bit too stiff and a bit too planted and not giving him the, the responsiveness or speed he wants on these straights. No, but it was beautiful there through the start of Sector 3, clipping the curves wonderfully. And it wasn't too shabby neither through Sector 2. This might be enough to challenge for P4 here, just ahead of Will, depending on this final sector. Coming out the final corner now, and then down this straight, there's nothing more he can do other than put his foot down to the line, and crosses the line indeed, and it is P4 then. Provisionally for Fishdix there, finding some pains all of a sudden at the end of the session. So good enough for him. Tadassi validates once again, and will not improve then from P10. He does not have the time to get back around. And there's a, a cheeky Mercedes there trying to get a bit of a toe there. Um, yeah, Espanol and Callum are both in the pits so won't um, go any quick or set at new times. Like they haven't got the time to come back out, so it's all on Diamond here to see if they can pull that extra half a second to Callum. Um, it's a big ask for the for, for our drive here. Um, I just don't see how he's got the pace to do it. He hasn't quite shown pace just like that throughout qualifying so far so I think it might be a stretch too far for Diamond to snatch that pole position away from Callum but nor did Callum really show a 29-2 throughout qualifying until now and supposedly using all of his tires in Q1. Here comes Max though who did improve round sector to about a tenth up on his time what's his final sector like as he comes over the line can he get people back from fish digs it's even better than that it's P3 he pushes a Spenio down then into P4 now and he won't go any quicker because he's oh, in the pits. Diamonds and validated through sector one so he won't go any quicker. And that then really is the fight for Paul decided. Cruisers backwards in a wall. Don't know how he's managed that one. Didn't quite <laughs> manage to see it through sector one. He'll start no higher than seventh then. And it's all on FPRL Locker then. Eight tenths up through Sector 2. Where can he stick this Aston Martin? Can he have a fantastic final sector? And can he put that car into the second row? We'll wait and see. We'll see what Saturday he's got. He does look like a very low downforce for speed. He's got some hammers to break. So he ride the curve on the outside. Went it wide there, but still rides the curve very nicely. To be honest, wide open, putting the pit lane slip line here and puts himself P7 133. P7 then losing time throughout that final sector maybe. And not quite enough to get himself into the top five. It was very close though between fifth and seventh separated by about half a tenth there. So it, but it is Fish Dicks that got the better size of that battle as we see Cruiser without his front wing on coming back to the pits then. Nobody else is going to improve, so that is the top 10, and as predicted then, it is Callum who takes pole position in his first FPRL race. Is he reserve driver? I think, I think he is. Um, yeah, he's reserve driver, yeah. Uh, I mean, for a reserve driver to set that sort of lap, that's um, that's impressive pace. That, that, I think some of the T2 guys will struggle to beat that on Friday. I think... Uh, one man might be sat here watching the stream, <laughs> perhaps with one eye on that time, <laughs> perhaps looking to make a bit of a call, uh, changing, perhaps, this might be the last time you see him in Tier 3, the first and last, <laughs> we'll see what he gets up to in the race anyway, but he does take pole then, by half a second as we wait for the cars to be wheeled back into the garage. Get a move on, lads, so we can get into this race. Now I can go and get a drink. Thank you, Silver Side Boy. I will go and get a drink. As always, at the end of qualifying. So nobody ready up, please. Um, between now and the race. But there then is your final classification 
for Q3. As I said, it is Callum Diamond Maxi in the top three, then Espenio P4, Fishtix P5, Will in P6, FPR Locker, unlucky then perhaps to miss out on a higher position, it's P7 for him. Cruiser couldn't get the lap together, nor could David Lowellface, and Talas couldn't get a lap in at all as they get the final three spots in qualifying then. TJ, I hope you're still there because I'm going to get a beverage on the order of Gary Hay. I hope you have a beverage to hand because <laughs> you can't I go and get one. <laughs> I've literally just come back from going to the toilet, so uh, I'll, I'll take over from this point now. I'll go and drink he's the back. To the toilet, he's going to drink his own piss, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey. Um, so yeah, that was very interesting qualifying. Um, not as close as last week and some shocks, but uh, we'll see what the race will hold. Um, if any of you are listening, obviously, please don't ready up. Um, so, I mean, let's put your predictions in. Who do we think is going to win? Any big shockers? As we load up for the the main race, um, it would be interesting to see what tyre stretches we do see here. Um, apologies, two seconds. <coughs> right. Um, as someone has readied up, which is fantastic, I hope whoever is readied up gets caught, um, because you will be receiving a very, very nice um, qualification band coming your way. Um, hopefully the drivers have had time to, to pick it, <laughs> sort of stretches out and put fuel on. Um, unfortunately, if you haven't, I, I do apologise and hopefully we have caught the guy who has read it up. Um, I've got a feeling who it could be, um, so we'll just wait and see. Uh, as the drivers are away. I will get the graphic up to see what tires we are running on one for the grid once again. Um, so, tire strategy wise, many viewers can't see it currently, um, but we, everyone is on medium, mediums bar three drivers who have uh, opted to go on the hards, who are Panigans, Tadas, and Fishstick, all on the hards um, as we run through the field. So, in P19, we've got Panic on the hard tires. Everyone else on medium up to this point. Um, from here on out, it's Mr. Vazbin, P18. P17, we've got I'm Not Good. P16, we've got Mongo. P15, we've got Skivid. P14, we've got T Jerk. P13, we've got Royalist. P12, we've got Willy Bomb. P11, we've got Scotsman, who um, will be hoping for a better race. Oh, God, who did pace. it then? Come on. I've, I've I've got a feeling who it was, but I'm not I'm not going to uh, call Come up on, just Mr. Yet. Raspberry. I I think, um, and only because he did it last night, I think it was Callum. Callum. You don't need to serve <laughs> your ball. <laughs> 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 um. So yeah. So in uh, Peter on the hard ties is. Oh, God, sorry. Oh, I don't know what he was. I didn't know what he was going through. Are you doing the grid? It's like, it's like, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing the grid. Yeah. Doing the grid. Oh, yeah. People might have forgot Q1. Go on. Carry on. I'll let, I'll let it go in. And P10, we've got Talas on the hard tyres. P9, David on mediums. P8, we've got Cruz on mediums. P7, we've got Locke on the mediums. P6, we've got Will on the mediums. P5, we've got Fishix, who is the last of our hard run here. P4, we've got Espinio. P3, Magsy. Two diamonds and our pole sitter for today, who definitely sandbags some of his time trial times. And uh, as you mentioned, might be his first and last race in tier three. We've got Callum, yeah, and he's also an idiot, but <laughs> he's also pulled very, very, very far ahead of Diamond Deal. Um, the start of the race, it's so much so that Mags has actually overtaken Diamond. Uh, looking to line up in the I love this. I love seeing he's going to get it wrong. One <laughs> oh, he's spot on his marks there. Well done, oh, Mags. Oh, Mags, see what you've done, lad. Diamond cruising right up. Oh, we're Espenio. It's a bit far back, got a bit cautious. Look at all this. <laughs> Come on, lads. <laughs> how, how long have you had now to practice this? Please. 
Sort it out. It's got oh, 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 God. Oh, Locke is pointing his car so far to the left here. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's saucy. And Will, to be fair, start about five yards back from his grid box. <laughs> Half the field can't line up in their grid box. Uh, good job, lads. God. You've done really well, though. Anyway, we are going to get ready then for the five red lights. For the start, then, of the Tier 3 Jeddah Grand Prix. And it is lights out. And away we go. And we're scrambling for a better camera angle. There we go, down into turn one. It's Maxi that's got a blistering start then. And has overtaken Diamond and Callum as Diamond and Callum come together. Barging wheels, no damage for either of them. Is there any spinners from turn one and two? No, not yet. They look like they've gone away with it. But what a start for Maxi. That's a fantastic start. Um, must have got to start bang on there. Two positions straight up. Um, yeah, the old drives could be nice and clean. As David Wall faces out an issue, and there's front wings flying everywhere currently. Yeah, David Wall faces front wing. Lost his front wing, I think. A couple of your might have lost the front wings for coming through sector one there. Throughout the field, apart from David Lawfax, down 10 then, and he'd be disappointed with that after making Q3. Scotsman's up a couple of places as well, but there goes Callum then, up the outside of Maxi. Must have been using plenty of that battery. Let's have a look and see how much he has used indeed. And it's about 10%, 15% down on Maxi then, so he did get the overtake done. Here's Maxi looking to get a bike back out of the Alpine into the final corner, not close enough then to the front three at the minute separated by about half a second and now it's Diamond that's looking to line and move up on Maxi down to turn one. Yep, um, as you were speaking about that, Cruz has got moved on his teammate well but he's come diving straight into the pit lane so I wonder if he got caught up in that David incident. I'll, I'll check and see if he does uh, replace his front wing. Well, they were close mm. together on track at the start of the race. No! Cruz has decided to take a very, very early stop and just change onto the hard tyres. There, but it does look like Maxi is really holding the diamond here. He's being cautious with the overtake then. And yeah, he can't get the move done. Maxi struggling through set to one. So despite his early start, doesn't look like he's going to have the pace in to fight for the win today. Yellow flag out as I'm not good. Had an issue then towards the end of the first sector. Wondering what damage he's got then. He's carried on his way and looks like he's got a bit of trouble with damage on that right hand side. Yeah, that's right, lost his grunt um, and plate. Um, as Skins also lost his wing as well, I thought someone else lost their wing. Oh, no one got, no, the game was playing tricks on me there. Then the definitely of the front wing there, it just reappeared. Diamond is absolutely looking to send it around the outside of Manzi here. He's been stuck behind him the entire lap. About a tenth or two behind him. How much he's loved DRS here into the final corner. Looking to perhaps swing it. Gets the cut back up the inside. What an overtake there. Now they're side by side though. Max looking to come back with a bit of battery usage. And all this is doing is hurting both of their races at the moment. As Callum can sit up top. Save the battery. Diamond's down to about 40% already. But he has now got the move. Donald Maxi at last into turn one. Yeah, it was a good move from Diamond, that was, um, I, he knew he had the better, the better traction on that corner and, and just sent it, but maybe it's stick, which was nice to see. Um, the grid is starting to, to space out a little bit, there isn't really any close battles on track other than Fishstick, who is on the back of Locker here, but Fishstick's on the hard tyre, so he's, he's doing a very good job of keeping on the back of Locker, who does go wide through sector one there. Yeah, there's no DRS at this point, but DRS is activated on this lap, so we'll see what Fishtricks can do when the DRS zone does come up. Took a little bit of time to warm up at the start of the race, so it's too dirt now, looks like he's on the issue then. Start of sector two. He's around, we were following the fight for the lead, he's in the wall at the moment. 
hasn't got any graphical damage at least. Looks like he might be able to carry on his way, but definitely no. Out of the running for any kind of points at the moment without a safety car. But what's happened here is Diamond then. It looks like he's found a bit of race pace on Callum here. And the gap between the two drivers now less than half a second. Yeah, Diamond showing his pace once again and, and you know really showing why he, you're challenged for this year. Um, Better in the fastest lap, just why there's not wonder if he'll try to send it. No, he decides to keep the flags against it, keeps it behind. But I, I do expect Diamond to really try to push Callum round and perhaps send it when he gets DRS and the DRS in two or three. Can he follow, of course, through this sector one? A very technical aerodynamic downforce sector one, of course, testing out these new cars, regulations, and game handling. As Callum looks like he has a bit of an issue there with the traction. And Diamond's got a great run out the end of the first sector here, looking to go around the outside. They're going to be side by side through the left hander here. And Diamond gets the move done around the outside. Has Callum got damage or something? Because he's just not got the pace at the moment. I am wondering if he's hit a wall somewhere and perhaps not only facial damage we can see, but he, he certainly is looking like he's struggling with that car currently um, compared to the pace he had just, just last lap or the last two laps, to be honest. Um, but he's got DRS and we'll see what he can do on Diamond here. As there has been an incident in sector one where TJ has spun and down, so his chance of points are definitely out the window now about safety car. Callum playing games there, moving off the DRS, not looking to get the move done in the previous DRS zone, waited for this one and looks there to throw it around the outside, gets the move done just before the full track yellow and the safety car then. So crucial yep, so there into the final corner. Callum got the move done. Yep, so uh, this has been caused by Scott's move. He's got no front wing currently. Spun it coming just uh, coming on the final corner. Well, not final corner, but one of the final corners into long straight for sector three. Um, Stewards decided to bring in the safety car. So I managed to see Scotsman in. Um, that was a shame because he was all over the back of fish sticks there. So I wonder if he's had an incident with fish sticks. on that perhaps Discord from the drivers to see what happens. It's all speculation at this point. Let's see that. Unfortunately. Uh, numerous drivers into the pits on lap five. Uh, out of twenty-five. Out of About out of fifth of the way through this race and so stretch to get the hard tires till the end here, TJ. But a lot of drivers coming in then to switch over. It'll be interesting to see if any of the front runners uh, yeah, definitely. As uh, we've got a bit of conspiracy theory going on in the Twitch chat, and it's from Ali Ferrari, who was throwing a bit of shade at Callum here, um, and saying the only reason he's so quick on the straight is because he's running zero zero wings, hence why he's so slow through the corners. I mean, if that's the case, that's a that's a very cheeky tactic from Callum. Um, but if if he is running zero zero wings, and uh, it's He's showing that sort of pace. I think a rule might be coming down banning drivers from running zero zero wings. No, I, 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 I mean, he found he had the pace in qualifying as well. I don't think I've set that pace, especially as part of that. So, this first sector was phenomenal. It was a real weakness. So, be able to. Straight line speed. We saw it with Diamond as well when he got past Callum. The straight line speed Diamond had as yeah. well. Yeah. Right up there. The DRS is a little bit more powerful. Um, of course, that, I think Callum kind of had much more battery at the time as well than Diamond, who still hasn't got his battery back. Battery. That would be the DRS to play with. So. I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily that, but. You never know. It, it's good to speculate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As um, Will and McLaren's had a bit of a nightmare in his pit stop, so he's Tadas here as well. Both drivers opting for the soft tyres, and in this game, the soft tyre really isn't a base tyre that you want to be on. Um, they'll probably last, I don't know, six, seven laps, maybe? But definitely committing to another pit stop here, then. But that one of a safety car, that two races are pretty much over, I'm going to say. Yeah, I think 
Well, the drivers will, will have to make an extra stop now. They might be thinking they could get that soft tyre to when everyone else is going to come in for their hard. Of course, the top 11. Well, the top 10 haven't taken a pit stop yet. Cruising pits on the first lap, of course, with those hard tyres, so he'll have to stop again before the end of the race. So at least the top 11 are definitely going to have to make a stop again. Panic in two on those mediums that you want that hold. And in the pots. Wow. Well. Cruise on them hard tyres could get to the end. So there was guys last week, I know it's different tracks and stuff, but there was guys last week that pitted on lap one and got the hard tyres going through 28 laps. So it's possible. They won't feel good towards the end of the race for certain, but he could push them to the end. Potentially, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely up there. Uh, if we get into the safety car, maybe. Uh, of course, I mean, the main thing about these safety cars now, uh, the new tyre, uh, tyre, uh, 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 really. <laughs> tyre, you know, you know, you know, we're the tyres warm up now. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, tyre temperatures now, it's so hard. The safety car probably a bit late on there. Oh, a very late call. But yeah, it's so hard to get the tyre temperature in. These drivers are going to really struggle now uh, to get the tyre temperature in, but then they really struggle to cool down again. That's the problem you have, and of course, these laps behind the safety car are helping that out anyway. Callum, though, bolting early on, then as they come to the line. Diamond wasn't caught out, though. Would he look to make a dive into turn one? Plays it safe for now, then feeds back in behind the Alpine. Everyone else looks like they might have got through safely. Fishstick's making a move for fourth, then on locker up the inside of him. And Diamond has got the move done then round the outside. But Callum really struggling then. This first set, maybe he is running zero zero. <laughs> he does. He's really, really struggling. Scotsman's oh, Scotsman's retired out. then. A big I'm pile up. Out. Big pile up this weekend. Tadas, I think there's some other drivers in there without a front wing as well. There's, I think, Congo got a three second penalty avoiding those two there, unfortunately for him. No safety car, interestingly enough, uh, thankfully. Yeah, so David Lopez hasn't got a front wing, and I think Mongo hasn't seen so. And then Mongo has got a front wing, somehow. As I as driving the reason wing left out and centre towards the back here, um, hitting the walls and seeing where bits of the front wing flying everywhere. Yeah, I think we uh, expected that, really, uh, in this race, and unfortunately, yeah, as you it's probably it's, it's just so easy to tangle with another car with these narrow walls, especially in that first sector. Really, that's like what's happened between Tadas and Scotsman there, unfortunately. So we have our first two retirees. The cars have been cleared from the track. No safety car coming out once again, fortunately. And it is Diamond then who has got the jump again on Callum. After the safety car, gap between the pair of them, just over half a second at the moment. Maxi. Trying to keep in touch at the moment, but is slipping back in the Mercedes. But the question is here, is Callum... Oh, he has just nibbled the wall, actually, as well. I know these front wings are a little bit tougher than they were last year, but that is not going to help again, either. And as he got some error, his first sector TJ's just lost about half a second. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> The conspiracy theory of zero zero wings is um <laughs> we can ever more likely. Especially if the time he's using to sector one and then gaining on these straights, so but we'll just see what he does when we get officially to, to, to the straight in sector two. Um Oh no, we've lost our host. Scotsman. Ah, has left ah. before the end of the session, so uh helpful. very naughty. Helpful. Um, so I mean, I'm not, I'm not straight. He's gained about two, three tenths. So we'll, we'll see what he does on this next straight from Callum. Um, if he was running zero zero rings, I expect him to be gaining more than time than he is currently. Yeah, I, I don't think he's running zero zero rings. No, so, I don't. Uh, I think he must have some kind of damage in that out in the first centre. It's just horrible for him at the moment. We're interested to see if he loses time here again. But as it stands, Diamond just about then. Outside of the DRS zone, that one second window which he has to be inside of, just clipping into it before the end of the straight there. 
Um, let's see then. Let's see now through this first sector. Has Diamond got this half a second advantage through sector one? Or is Callum just taking his time to really build himself and get himself warmed up in this race? He has lost a couple of tenths so far then. Yet yeah, Diamond again does hold an advantage through that first sector. Callum biting back now though. So I think we are going to get a race in our hands here hopefully TJ. And we're not going to see Diamond just walk away with the race here. Yeah, definitely. Um, we shall come later on that, but the next first battle on track is Fish Sticks on the back of Locker. Locker's having a nightmare through sets of one. And Fish Sticks doing a fantastic job keeping up with him on these hards. It will just help when he goes through seconds into the mediums um, in about, I don't know, eight, eight nine laps. Um, so we'll see what Lock Fish Sticks can do with a, a bit of DRS for these sectors two and three. Yeah, and Fish Sticks making those hard tyres work really well. Now, of course, eight laps in medium tyre runners will start to feel the effects slightly here that might be helping fish sticks on the back of the Aston Martin now there's too much going on throughout the field but the problem is of course with this circuit is that everyone does get spread out when they have instance and we've just had a safe to come we've already got five drivers over 12 10, 20 seconds back off the rest of the field unfortunately so not going to be able to get involved in the action without another safety car yeah, definitely. Um, as Callum's really closing that gap on that DRS, he's just gained about six, seven tenths and had to slam his brakes on to avoid going to the back of Diamonds. Um, but I do expect Diamond to pull this gap again coming through the, the very tricky sector one. Um, so we'll wait and see if, if Callum can stick with him or whether he starts losing it again. And yeah, Callum just hasn't got the downforce to take these corners correctly. His mags is out! Big crash then, we just caught the ends of that inset. Another safety car out that he's lost in. Where we saw Panic End lose it in qualifying then. So easy to do it there as I mentioned, coming off that right hand. If you just flick into the wrong gear, you can lose traction very easily. And so Magsy then, out of the race. Not had the start to tier three this season that he would have wanted to a few points last week and running in the podium this week but now out of the session and this safety car TJ a perfect opportunity for those drivers on those medium tyres to get to the end with comfortable hard tyres now. Yep definitely um, plays in the hands of Diamond, Callum Locker, Willie Bum and Sk Skivid running P6. He's had a fantastic race so far and this, this will definitely benefit him. Um, um, also this plays against Fish Sticks here and the likes of I'm not good and if they want to pit again, um, I imagine Fish is going to stay out and try extend that, that stint on the hard tie, but he won't have the advantage he wants now over when he gets to his um, second stint on the mediums. Well, let's see then if Callum did have any damage to that front wing. Coming into the pits now, we saw him struggle with his aero a little bit early on. Doesn't look like there's a front wing coming out for him, TJ, so it looks like then it was just, in, unless he opted not to change that front wing, it was just an inherent deficit in aero in that Alpine with that setup then as most drivers coming into the pits then the, the hard tire runners I'm not good and Cruiser continuing on oh, is Diamond gonna sneak out just ahead of Cruiser oh, he's, I think he's got ahead of both of them actually and into the lead then that was very very tight and all this means then is that there's now two cars in between Diamond and Callum net first and second at the moment giving Diamond a brilliant cushion for the safety car restart Yep, definitely. And under the safety car as well, um, them hard tyres when we first come out the pits are, are, are very bad with um, tyre temps. But he's got the advantage now to build the tyre temp up before the safety car restart. And so it's, this is perfect scenario for Diamond here. Um, the biggest loser here is probably Fish Sticks. So he did decide to put mediums on. But with Mercedes being the first garage, um, I, might, I think he's got help from everyone coming into the pits and he's lost a, a handful of places here and he dropped behind Lockett. He's not even dropped behind Locker, he's also behind Mongo now in P7 that didn't choose to come into the pit, so double damage there for Fish Sticks. Back on onto the mediums, so should get them to the end. A couple of laps behind the safety car, hopefully for him, as David Lawface is chasing the pack at the moment. But in terms of real gainers then, through this, this safety car, you'd have to say as well, you said TJ Skivid. Now out on fresh hard tyres, it'll be interesting to see what he can do from 11th. Can he get some points this week? 
Yeah, I think you can. You know, to, to see what P6 is fantastic, and um, you know, some of these guys in front of him, so Mongo and TJ and Kuzu have been running um, these ties for six, seven, eight, nine laps now. Um, obviously, they'll struggle towards the end, where Skinner's got the fresh set. Um, I imagine he's got the, the pace line of Raz being really bomb here, um, you know, for being so out of the field, and he's on a fantastic pace so far. Yep, a great race indeed. Too, too shabby of a qualifying, neither uh, did the ski bits. Um, speaking of qualifying, let's have a look to see the big gainers and the losers so far in this race. And so it's definitely, I'm not good at the moment, up 15 and in B2. Yet to stop though, and he's carrying a three second time penalty for track limits. The cruiser's up five as well. Good race from him so far, but also yet to pit as well. T Jerk up to fifth. So Pit Locker is up mm, um, as well. Well, TJ came into the pit uh, very early on. <laughs> very early yeah, on. Yeah, uh, Cruz, by that, I'm not going to have to by the way. Yeah, very early on again. But it'll be interesting to see if they can get to the end now then. Like you said, 9 and 10 lap hard tyres. I mean, we said last week people were going the full race distance on hard tyres. So, two safety cars now. If we get a third... I, I think I think the guys, especially on the Dunn Cruiser, they'll definitely get to the end now. Um, it, obviously, the first safety car will guarantee that, but if you're dental of safety car, I think they'd be they'd be comfortable getting to the end now. But I I, I think they're going to drop places because I'm tired. I just will feel really bad towards the end of the race, and especially for sets one where you really need the grip off the tires. Of course, I mean, these safety cars bring back into contention, you know, Espenio, who was about 12 seconds off the pack, Will, the Royalist, Panic End, David Lowface, that, that gaggle of cars that is so far back in the field, now at half distance, and they can now actually have a fight for some points, maybe. They haven't got the best tyres in the world, but, you know, they'll definitely get to the end now, and it's a much better chance than they had uh, a couple of laps ago, we should say. Yeah, definitely. Um, David Bolfers will be aging for the entire here. I mean, from the race start, he had everything to his lap, but he'd ring off um, lap one. Yeah, and had the safety car restart, and lost his front wing again, so... Third time lucky. That's the same. He'll be hoping it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's third time lucky. <laughs> I'd be interested what Espanio can do here. He had the pace in qualifying. Now... Can he find the pace here in the race? He's been brought, he's been unlucky so far, but he is back now in contention. Off this final corner goes Diamond and the safety car is coming and he's gone already as well. But I'm not good. Has not been caught napping. Swooping from right to left, looking to make a move up the inside there. Those scrubbed hard tires getting great traction off the final corner. And oh. contact between the pair of them. Bit of a racing instant there. After the safety car, I don't think there was too much in it between them. But Diamond has come out better off. I'm not good losing out to Cruiser and all of that. He's just gone to sleep. As Callum gets a three second time penalty then. And that is not going to help him in his fight for the win here. And uh, sat tucked behind his teammate at the moment, who you'd be thinking, if I'm not good, knows the position that he's in, he'd be getting out of the way of his teammate to let him get past Cruiser and chase after Diamond as I lose my co coms very handily from the party and the game. That's gone well. But here we go, a double overtake by the Alpines and on Cruiser, who just got completely caught in a straight line and using each other here to get past the McLaren Islet, but skipping across the kerb and now letting his teammate go, but the damage is already done. The gap already is 2.3 seconds between Diamond and Callum. And interesting now, see if Callum can pull that gap back, especially with that three second penalty as well. That's, uh, now I'm by myself. <laughs> Look through the field there, Will is struggling at the moment. But he is now looking to get a skimmed. Lots of action going on after the safety car here. They're looking to get around the outside of the Williams, but pulls back in behind him. Doesn't think about a move of the inside, avoids any kind of contact there. But they will both continue on, but it 
surely a matter of time now before Will does get past Skibbit. Williams is the winner behind Royalist getting a bit wide there, struggling with the traction at this point. Then these drivers six lap old hards at the moment. They'll be very comfortable at the moment, but track limits there for Will and a three second penalty to go with it. They're being wrapped up throughout the field. Now five drivers carrying a penalty. Mongo got one for speeding in the pit lane. He's probably six at the moment. That won't be good for his race, of course. I think Royalist has had an insert and there's a, a big, big bit of carbon fibre bouncing down the straight there. Someone's had an issue with their front wing. It's Mr. Raspberry then. P13 in his first FPRL race now running around without a front wing, unfortunately. Then for a new one, track yellow, and it's another full safety car then. So it's another safety car for the race today, the third one we've had this evening. Not a virtual, but a full safety car then. Unfortunately, they haven't quite fixed the game yet to tell us exactly what it is. Tell from the sideboards, luckily in the light panels around the track, that it is a full safety car then. And of course, Mr. Raspberry into the pits then. Along with I'm not good, Mongo then. So I'm not good choosing to come into the pits now. Get rid of those tyres as well. Cruiser continues on in fourth place on those 13 lap holds hard. So definitely getting to the end with this safety car now. But a bit ragged by the end of the race. I was going for the soft tyres over 10 laps to go. Panic end, Mr. Raspberry and Mongo then all onto the softs. And what this does is let Mongo serve that five second time penalty. So he has managed to get rid of that. So what this does mean is that we are going to get, once again for the third time today, Diamond and Callum safety car restart. It'll be interesting to see then. And get the jump on Diamond after this safety car. It was Diamond that got the jump on Callum the last time these two were at the front of the crocodile after a safety car restart. TJ, I think, is ready to come back. I think this kid stopped putting forks in the, the router socket, so we'll, we'll see if we can get him back in the party. Um, maybe, if I can find where he is. Let me guess, he's appearing offline, so he's at the bottom of the list. No, he isn't. There we go. Fantastic. Try and get him back in to the party in the race. Here he is. If you wanted a break, mate, you should have just said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, yeah, so just leave me like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. My Xbox decided it wanted to uh, have a moment and then wouldn't turn back on. Which was uh, interesting. Uh, we've, we've, we've come to the assumption that the child has been broken forks in the winter. Um, oh, okay, okay. So... Respect. <laughs> so you're going to have to uh, sort him out, TJ. Um, Ricks are not toys. If you wouldn't mind him dropping his back to the game as well, that'd be appreciated. I've already done it, you want me to do it again, lad? Oh, have you? Have you? Have you? Oh, no, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got oh, you now. I'm very sorry. Yeah, yeah that, that's oh, a okay. mistake there, so. Open your eyes, lad. Rookie error. Rookie error. Uh, while you've been gone, there's another safe car. I don't know if you've got the stream on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had the stream on, yeah. It was <laughs> interesting to watch. <laughs> okay, there's another safe car out. Um, third one. I don't even know what it was for. Um, <laughs> Miss, Mr. Raspberry lost a front wing. So, at some point, that, that caused a problem. Safe to start for at least come mop up, but what it does give us is a very interesting uh, last nine laps here. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's good to see that Diamond uh, is still in P1 with that, uh, after that little contact with um, I'm not good. Um, I'm still on the back of him, which was, uh, which was interesting to see. Um, Locker and Cruz are fighting up there as well. That's, uh, I mean, they, they could go any way currently. Fish Sticks has made some ground up as well, so. I think maybe the last podium spot's up for grabs for any of these drivers from P3 down to probably P8 currently. Yeah, definitely. Uh, 
chose not to come into the pits. I'm not good. Did I think he had damage though? Uh, I'm not good. He's come out right at the back of the field now. T jerk as well, running in the points at the moment. Six on the hard tyres. Um, I was about to say, hope the safety car comes in this lap. It is coming back. And I, I did say TJ while you were gone that last time these two were at the front of the field they were in reverse order and after the safety car they were in reverse order so can Callum get ahead of Diamond here this time as Diamond got ahead of Callum the time before it'll be interesting to see what see what Diamond decides wants to go um, I'm getting very close to the back of Diamond there um, Barker pulling out as well so he's going to give Bruiser a good run here um, so we'll see what he does, and Diamond's gone and caught Callum sleeping. Can Locker or Cruiser take advantage of that down to turn one? They're looking to sandwich them. Cruiser being pushed right up to the wall. Neither of them could make a move on Callum there, despite him being caught napping by Diamond, who's already got a gap to over a second at the moment. Yellow flag out once again. I'm not good being in the wars on that safety car restart. It's going from bad to worse for him. But it is very much status quo at the top at the moment. Yeah, as well, she's had a moment coming through sector one as well. Um, I'm not sure if we've got contact, but he's spun it coming around the corner. Um, no front wing damage for any of the drivers, though. Um, yeah, most of the drivers, drivers making it through. Well, Fish Tricks will be an interesting prospect on these medium tyres here. They're six laps old at the moment. They've got another nine to do. He's definitely got the traction at the moment, especially compared to Cruiser's 15 lap old tyres. And he's going to get the move done then. Cruiser backs out early. Perhaps knows that the fight isn't quite there at the moment with his tyre condition. And he's down to P5. And as fish sticks now, P4. And can he chase after the podium places then? Yeah, I reckon so. He's got pace them tyres. Obviously, he'll start dropping off probably in the next couple of laps. But um, so we'll have to wait and see who it is. Obviously, Locker's in the better position here. Um, but Locker, if you can keep up with um, Callum, he's in for a chance of P2. Um, has Callum only got three seconds currently? Yeah, nice. three seconds at the moment while his teammate looked like he was going to get the move done, but has an issue. T-Jerk holding up a lot of drivers here. Espenio has now jumped Willy Bum, now looking perhaps to try and get off T-Jerk himself. And Willy Bum then has gone from being in seventh. Now looks like Royalist might pick him into ninth place here. Puts up the inside into two and does get the move done then. So Willibum struggling at the moment. And now Mongo's looking to get past the Aston Martin at the moment. So nearly three, four places there in the matter of half a lap there. And Willibum down to 10th. Yeah, that's disastrous from the Aston Martin driver, that is. Um, he definitely would be happy with that. And um, obviously, at the conference, risk if he needs at this moment of time. But if he can keep his head down, um, then. Soft tyres and Mongo should drop off pretty quick so he can perhaps get move a place back here. And we just need to keep in this DRS zone now the cars in front of him. Well, Callum had the pace in qualifying. It was half a second quicker in the end than anyone else. And but in the race that hasn't converted at the moment, we, we might have expected him to run off into the lead. I know the safety cars might have hampered that slightly, but Diamond has never really been out of touch and distance of Callum or race no matter what order they've been in. And perhaps, you know, we're seeing here the strength of race pace from Diamond and Callum's perhaps Achilles heel at the moment or whether he just hasn't managed to find a rhythm in this race. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he definitely had the pace in the medium tyres, but his hard tyres he's not enjoying at all. Um, isn't really dropping the locker behind me, to be honest. Um, Although I was saying that he is pulling a couple of temps now, and that's kind of straight line speed, I imagine. Um, but yeah, I, I think Callum's still going to be impressed with the pace he's had, but I think at this point, if he doesn't win this race, the pace he shows. There's an almighty fight going on for P6 at the moment. Espenio is now ahead of TJ, then the other flag out in sector one. I think Skip has had a bit of a coming together with I'm Not Good and Will, and the three of them carrying on then at the moment 14 15. And 16th as things stand now, a little bit cut adrift from the field. Spenio, who we know had a bit of pace as well in qualifying, looking to try and get into the top five now, setting off after Cruz, after dispatching then of T Jerk. And as I mentioned, this is a very close fight at the moment, four sixth place. All the drivers with a second of each other, as I'm not good around for about the 50th time. 
and <laughs> has got as to go again. David's had a moment as well. He, I think he, he's been caught up with Mr. Basby. Mr. Basby's got no front wing now. There's a safety um, car. And again. that's another safety car. Yeah. Can you, um, can you just check, TJ, the, the safety car setting? Um, yeah, I'll check it. I'm, I'm sure I checked it in the of the juice box. Yeah, I'll double check it as well. Uh, that's um, Yep, set to reduced. Um, so, confirmed oh. FIA love safety cars around Jeddah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is it about the FIA and uh, safety cars in the Middle East? No idea. No idea. As Cruz is into the pits, and as two is a Spedio, and I'm just wondering, TJ, is this going to be for soft tyres and a lot of the field? Coming into the pits, the top four have stayed out. Diamond Callum, Lucka, Fishdix, all still out there. And yes, all these drivers in, coming in for the soft tyres. And have these drivers played an absolute blinder here? I think so, yeah. There, there, there was, obviously, if any couple of petty, they would have been, they would have lost out. But the fact that pretty much the, half the grid here is petty to go on fresh softs or some sort of form of fresh tyres. These guys in front should be really worried about the pace that these guys will show, especially from the restart. And while well, there's only five, what do you reckon about? Uh, there's probably going to be three laps of racing, four laps of racing at a posh. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll, I think the safety car coming on lap 21. So I think that'll give us four laps. Four laps, yeah. It's four laps yeah. of racing. Two without DRS, of course. Taking two laps again, activate as well. That makes it or not, but at the moment it's Cruiser in P7 then. Very fresh, soft tyres. Spenio behind him, TJ, William on Royalist as well, all on fresh soft. So they're really the five to watch at the moment from P7 to P11. What can they do more laps in terms of the damage? To these drivers that haven't pitted them. And that, that is the problem, as you said, TJ. The jeopardy is there. If Diamond had come into the pits but everyone else had stayed out, then he would have he would have made a, a massive error because he would have been right down, you know, perhaps you know, P13, P14, uh, if no one else pitted. Well, because everyone else pitted, he could have. He could have. But he, did, he wanted to know that at the front of the train. Yeah, that's why he was about leaving the base and. It's, it's always a tough one. Um, he probably has made the right call, um, even though Cruz has got the fresh tyres. He's still got a lot of traffic to come through. Um, and Diamond's been really confident in his hard tyres as well, so don't blame him for not trying to ditch him. Yeah, and of course, it, they, he has run a lot of laps. And they all have. I mean, Callum Locker and Fishdix have all run a lot of laps behind the safety car on these tyres, so I don't imagine they're very warm. Um, but was just a natural tyre advantage of being on the soft end for four pretty much quality laps now from those drivers on the soft tyres. Um, and of course, you know, the safety car warm up as well. We know the temperatures drop down so quickly now. Um, when you're behind the safety car, it could take ages to come back up. So, are they going to get that advantage from the soft tyres as well? There's only one way to find out, really, and we need to get uh, the safety car into the pits. And yeah, it's David Love face. David Lawface was just pretty for fresh that soft, so but he should catch the pack here. So yeah, I'm, the, the safety car should come in this lap. I'm not worried about that. Um, and yeah, let's see what these guys can do with um, what would be yeah four quality laps. Well, this might be the most exciting four laps we're gonna get all season. And the top four drivers at the moment, all on worn hard, medium hard or medium tyres, ten lap old. For the four drivers at the front. You've got Mongo in P5, Skivit in P6 on the hard tyres. Then you've got five drivers. Cruiser, Espenio, TJ, William and Royalist all on fresh softs and looking to get ahead of them. And I feel like there's going to be too much action to keep up with here. And there's got to be a crash somewhere along the line. Oh, that's it. You've just done it. You've cursed them. There's got to be a crash. There's got to be. It's no curse. It's just common sense. <laughs> <laughs> As expected, then, yeah, the safety car will come in at the end of lap 21, then, so it will be four racing laps here to see if Diamond, Callum, and Locker can all stay on the podium in whatever order they can. Perhaps they need to work together here to fend off the threat of those behind them. 
It's the third time you've seen the combination of Diamond and Callum after a safety car restart. They didn't trade places last time. Diamond timed it perfectly to get ahead of the Alpine. When would he choose to go this time around is the question. Yeah. Um, and he's chosen about the same point again. And I think he's caught Callum sleeping once again. And Locke is going to move down to turn one here. Locke is side by side with Callum. A little bit late on the brakes, turns across, and I think Carl about to bounce back, back out there ever so slightly, but Locker takes P2 from the restart. More importantly, Cruz, I think Skimmy's going to screw down the issue. Skimmy's lost two places already, those drivers behind him, Cruz with many on those fresh tops, getting the Alpine driver, the Williams driver, I should say, out of the way, and therefore down to P8. Already now, as you mentioned, Locker is into P2 then ahead of Callum. Yellow flag out for Skibby, who now has had an issue at the end of sector one. It's right at the back of the field joining TJ. But it's now a question then, because we're half a lap down. Can Cruz now get ahead of Mongo in P5? Yeah, he's got to be careful because the Spaniards over the back of Cruz here, so he's got to make his, he's got to make his move pretty quick. And if you want to try their podium plays, you've got no choice but to try and do a send and keep back of Mongo. But no DRS for the first two laps after a safety car, so they'll get DRS for the remaining couple of laps. But he's got to get a move done as soon as possible. The Spaniards looking very punchy. Mongo now looking to get the move done on fish sticks, of course, but no DRS until another lap. And we go around once again, but the traction off that final corner, very clear to see then between the drivers. Fastest start for Diamond, I'm sure one of those soft time winners is going to take it next time around. Here comes Mongo then with the, the assistance of the battery, not able to throw up the inside this time, but Cruiser makes the most of it. And the front wing of Cruiser, I think, has been clipped there. And I think he's missing half of it now. And of course, yeah, it's now going to affect his aero through this sector one. Yeah, I think Fish, I, I think he tried a bit too greedy, and maybe Fish takes out to break ever so slightly because he thought Mongo was going to take the move. But that's Diamonds really... gets a three second penalty, sorry, TJ, which now means that as it stands, FBRL Locker will stand on the top step of the podium. There's still two and a half laps to go. But Diamond crucially then getting that three second penalty through sector one. Yeah, that's it. That's going to be a massive upset for Dry Diamond. But that's a fantastic result from Locker. He can just keep with him now. Um, just keep it out off track limits and just keep it nice and clean like Dad's been doing. Um, Calm's over the back of him. He's going to reach the move. Callum is. Gets the move done before the corner. So this isn't going to help Locker out much at all. Um, he goes into back of um, Calamy, but he's got no ERS at all, which is going to hamper the Aston Martin driver. The last thing he wants now is to get caught up in a scrap with Callum. All he has to do is keep within three seconds off these top two drivers in order to claim the win today. But as you mentioned, no ERS. Front two struggling too, with only 20%, but slightly more for them. What will help him though, of course, is this DRS that he'll get now off the back of the Alpine in front. And the gap between him and the leader, about 1.5, 1.6 seconds at the moment. Callum gets it wide through sector, uh, corner two, I should say, there, but has managed to hold the lead, uh, the whole second place at the moment. Cruz not really making much of an indent at the moment with that front wing damage, and in fact, he's holding up the other soft tire runners who can't seem to get past him. Yeah, I think James is trapped between him and Spinny. Spinny went for the move and went on board, and Spinny looked like he had to back out ever so slightly. But Cruz is really, yeah, Cruz is really softening here. He's had to, he's had to concede a possession by getting off track. Yeah, Spinio then up to P5, a lap and a half of racing to go. The yellow flag out at the end of sector one. It's panic end, and I think has put it in a wall. He has carried on and hasn't retired from this race. The gap now between Diamond and Locker just trickles over three seconds then. So Diamond doing all he needs to do now. Locker struggling with that ERS management. And I don't think he's able to keep up with the back of Callum at the moment either. He's still got another lap to go, but Diamond just about doing enough at the moment. Yeah, this is fantastic pace from Diamond. This is what I was saying. I think he made the right move to not pit. He's so confident in his hard tires and he's just pulling that gap constantly. Um, even so for the Aston Martin driver of Locker, you know, he... To get P2 after his qualifying and be over the moon with it. Um, 
the rates point you couldn't keep up with Diamond Gear, but he's been in the, he's been in the world of his own Diamond Dash from the race. There's another race going on as well with three second penalties at the moment. If Fishtix can stay within three seconds of Callum, he'll take a podium from him uh, this evening. The gap at about 2.9 at the moment. Diamond has got the gap now to lock up, up to about three and a half seconds. So as I mentioned, doing enough now to keep his win today. Fortunately for him, despite his error earlier on. And Cruz is really struggling that front wing now down to P6. What could have been for him on that safety car restart, unfortunately never materialising. Mongo pick up the three second time penalty, which will take him then out of the points. Running P8 at the moment will promote William and Royalist. Oh no, it might say 10th actually, I think. Mr. Raspberry has a penalty too. Yeah, that's right. Um, as Diamond is, is bumpy coming through a sector two, only, only um, about half the track to go, but less than half the track. He's got to just navigate these last few corners, doing it very nicely, car planted, and just opening his ERS, just draining the last of his battery he's got. Um, maybe your battles on the spinner is in the back of fish sticks, but. Diamond is coming down the final corner, takes the curb and is going to be very comfy winner here and takes the checkered flag and Diamond is our winner of the Grand Prix. Great race from him and even despite having that three second time penalty does manage to claim his first win of the season. It is indeed FPRO Locker then he'll take P2, not shabby from him either even though it looked like the win might have been on the cards at one stage. It's Callum in P3 rounding off the podium on his FPRO debut. Not a bad race from him, but perhaps he'll be disappointed after the advantage he had in qualifying. Then as T-Jerks and across the line for us as well. There was plenty of action in that race, but perhaps TJ not the exciting four laps we were going to see at the end there. Perhaps not helped by Cruiser's front wing damage, which really stunted his progress there. Yeah, that's right. He'd be disappointed about damage. Um, don't know whether it'll get sent to the stewards or not. I suppose that's one for um, uh, Cruiser to, to figure out. But yeah, once he got that front wing damage, he dropped on the back of fish sticks. Um, and then he healed all the other softeners behind him. Um, so yeah, so that exciting four laps just sort of ended within a lap. Yep, and there is your podium celebrations then. As I mentioned, it is Diamond with his first win of the season, continuing his run of podiums after P2 last time out. The form is very much with him at the moment in this Tier 3 Championship. It'll be interesting to see if he can carry that on if he's racing next week in Australia. But there's definitely competition in the field still. It's not going to be a runaway title as we saw last year. There's your classification for the race and I've already mentioned the top three and P4 it's a Spenio for Alfa Romeo, great race from him, started four, had issues early on but managed to recover to fourth place with the safety cars. Fishtix P5 from him, perhaps not quite the strong finish he was hoping for given his pace last season here in tier two and his podium last time out but it's still a good finish in P5. It's Cruiser, Willy Bum, Will, Royalist and Mongo who just held on to the points despite that 6 second time penalty. Mr Raspberry in P11, unfortunately missing out on points on his FPRL debut. And then it's Skibid, Paniken, TJ, David Lowface, I'm Not Good, Magsy, Tadas and Scotsman with the bottom four. Unfortunately not finishing the race then. Yep, um, as we've got all our podium setters in the party, which was uh, very nice and efficient from them. Um, just a reminder to all of you to uh, include your audio for the interviews, please. Yep, great reminder there, TJ. I think we had an issue with that last week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get, yeah, we'll get them in and including their audios. Um, I haven't done it on this game yet, where you go and have a look at the car. <laughs> Oh, go! Oh, I, 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 I think I found I, it. I think I found it. Okay. I, I, I made a, I made an absolute <laughs> fool myself last week when I did this. I found it. I found it. Don't worry. There we go. Right. We're in. There we go. So CJ, if you want to interview our third place finisher and our first uh, place finisher, and I'll uh, interview. Yep. Cheers. Um, so yeah, just 
got final man, make sure you're included. So, uh, yeah, congratulations on your uh, FPRL debut podium, Callum. How are you feeling? I mean, from the pure silence there, lads, I can only imagine you're absolutely buzzing. He can't believe it. <laughs> He's absolutely He's got shot. smacked the lad is. He's fainted with joy. <laughs> yeah, Earth to Callum, if you do heal us, lads, like, let us know. Um, we'll put this up. Oh! oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about your quality now. And uh, yeah, you, you showed fantastic pace for Elsa. I mean, from, from Q1, we thought that Diamond was going to be the, the pace setter. Then in Q2, you just come out of nowhere. And in Q3, you even went quicker, which was uh, it shocked all of us, especially on your, on your debut. Um, I, 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 I suppose I, I'm going to ask this question because some shade was thrown your way. Obviously, you can answer truthfully or, or tell us a lie, but um, a particular driver suspected you were running 0 0 wings. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Callum was running a preset and um, we threw that zero zero wing um, theory out the window. So, I mean, even so, on a preset, Callum, that's fantastic, that is. Um, to... I mean, absolute respect to you, mate, to, to, to throw it out the window and get the preset works. That, that, that's. that's uh... You may have just given some inside information out to our T1 and T2 drivers potentially. <laughs> so we'll see if anyone follows you soon. But, um, but yeah, but through your race, um, you're obviously keeping up with, with diamonds. Um, for the majority of the race, you know, you were trading positions here and there. Um, and you've already mentioned that you, you, you were struggling through sector one, which is what we saw through sector one. You were losing anything up to five tenths, and then you were gaining it back on the straights. Um, I mean, I, we noticed as well that diamond was. was catching you sleeping on a couple of safety car restarts were you just trying to get your tyres warmed up or didn't you expect him to go <laughs> yeah the FIA were very safety car happy I mean there was a couple incidents where we weren't sure why they'd come out but yeah um, but yeah as, as we look forward um, obviously you're, you're a T3 reserve and hopefully we can see you but Race again, but um, if you do race, are you looking forward to Australia next week? Even with the new layout, I know there's a. Uh, I know I'll. Uh... Um, I think. I think Bill will agree on that one that he prefers the old layout to the new layout, but um, we'll see what the new layout can provide next week, but um, yeah. Congratulations on your debut podium, Colin. Fully deserved. And I'll uh, pass over to Biddle to interview um, Locker. Yes, congratulations once again, Callum. And well done, Locker, as well, P2 today. I'll keep it short and sweet as we're nearly at 10 o'clock already now, somehow. But Jesus. of course, uh, after your qualifying, did you expect to be on the podium today? Um, Not really, no. I'll be honest. Uh, always a tough track to drive, Jaddy. Um, it's just about keeping it clean, keeping it penalty free. Then I had a slight inkling I'd be in with a chance, but uh, no, I think podium and certainly P2 was more than exceeding my expectations for tonight, so I'm chuffed. Yeah, it seemed like you struggled with the pace initially in qualifying. Did it just take you a few laps to find your rhythm and get really a lap time on the board? Yeah, I think it did, especially in Q1. I was shocking by my standards i must admit set myself out for my standards but q2 i found the pace from somewhere 
Um, and then Q3 was quite close. I think it was between Biff down to, I think it was me or P8 in the end. So, yeah, then, like I say, the race was just about keeping me head down, keeping me out the wall, and hopefully not picking up any penalties, which I did. Yeah, we definitely profited from that. I think you would have been on the podium, even if Callum didn't have uh, his uh, penalty anywhere, at least in P3. But, you know, P2, he profited <coughs> from Callum having that penalty. And at one stage, it looked mm -hmm. like you might have even been in for the race win. Were you aware of that? And perhaps did that uh, something in your mind? Yeah, I was, especially when I saw Diamond pick up his uh, three-second penalty. I think that's when I started being off me all me RS, just trying to keep within that three seconds. But obviously, once I got... Once that was pretty much burned out, I knew it was a case of as soon as Callum got past, just at least try and keep up with him. To at least get P2. Yeah, and I mean, you didn't quite manage any points last week, uh, but obviously on the podium this week. I don't know how you fare in with the game, of course, but going forward, do you expect to be able to be in the fight for podiums in other races? Uh, I'm wanting to, yeah. It's always a task, obviously. I, had a, I think I had a pretty good season last season. Uh, dropped off at the end. So I'm hoping I won't be up there again. Yep, no, hopefully. Uh, you, I'll be talking to you again, uh, for your sake anyway. Yeah, hopefully, uh, mate. So get yourself on the podium in some future races, but well done today. And I'll hand back over then to TJ to interview our race winner, Diamond. Yep, cheers, uh, Bill, and yeah, congratulations on your P2. Um, but more importantly, cheers, congratulations mate. on your race win, Diamonds. How are you feeling? Well, not a good race then, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I feel great. I wasn't very confident coming into the race, I'm not going to lie. I knew that my one lap pace was alright, but I was doing uh, practice Grand Prix and I was a shambles on uh, tyre dag. So I wasn't particularly confident, but I'm well over the moon at once. Yeah, I mean, from Quali, we, we, as I was saying to Callum, from Q1, we, we saw you were miles ahead of the pack and we were expecting you to fly away, but then Callum popped up and sort of pushed you to the challenge and you just didn't look like you had the, the pace to, to challenge him. Is that because you couldn't get the lap in or did you think so, you know, Callum... Go on. Uh, yeah, pretty much. He blew me out of the water. Uh, in Q1, I was feeling confident because I was like, well quite far ahead and it's going to be quite easy and then he smacks me down to earth in Q2 and then in Q3 just build a gap even more so I wasn't expecting to win I was expecting <laughs> second at least but well done to Callum and Locker as well for two, uh, P2 and P3 it's a great race yep um, yeah from our point of view you and Callum were pushing each other all the way throughout the race um, Bedel commented that on one of the safety car restarts that um, you, Callum was leading it and you managed to get a switch back into turn one. Um, did you just get the better, better reaction time to save Callum going? Um, or did, did, did you know you had to get the move done to get past him? Uh, kind of a mixture of both. Uh, and I, I knew I was, I was quick to keep up with him, but then I was just burning my ERS because I knew I needed to make that move. Otherwise, with his straight line speed, he was going to waltz away from me. Yeah, um, yeah, we, we commented on straight line speed, and that, you know, through sector one, you were you were pulling the gap on the straight, so he was pulling it back, and you did a fantastic job of holding him behind for pretty much the entire race, to be honest. Um, so yeah, as as, as um, I spoke to you last week as well, that you know you've really carried your pace through from season three, and the first two races, um, you've really thrown your marker down. So. Um, can we expect to see this pace continue on, or are we expecting to see on the podium going forward? Oh, definitely. I'm hoping to be up here every race. I know that's a bold statement, but I think I can do it. No, I mean, g given the pace that you've um, shown already, you know, it'd be, it'd be fantastic to have you on the podium every week. And um, I suppose the question, last question to you is, are you looking forward to Australia next week? Yes, it is one of my more preferred tracks with the new layout. I think the new layout works a lot better than the old one. Fantastic, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll speak to you next week then as well. Um, Thank you very much. On your, on, your, um, on your win. Thank you. And I'll uh, pass across back to, back to Bill. Yeah, no, congratulations from me as well, Diamond. Great race. 
once again from your, your second podium of the season and finally getting that win after missing out last week. So well done for that. But that's all we've got time for this week. It is just past 10 o'clock now. For a long time with all those safety cars, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, go to bed now, people. Rest your heads and wake up tomorrow because we have got Tier 1 on tomorrow night at the same time. 8 o'clock UK uh, along with Tier 2 on Friday at the same time as well, both around Jeddah of course, and then this Sunday is the start of our Season 2 of our Formula 2 Championship in which you'll see uh, me, uh, TJ and Diamond all racing, I don't think Locker's in it though, um, this season. Oh yeah. Oh, he is, he is, so you'll see all of us <laughs> that on Sunday, very interesting to see all the tiers crossed, um, all in those beautiful cars of course, once again. But until next time, that's all from me tonight. Thank you again, TJ. I've got to ask you one quick question, of course, before I wrap this stream up. And who is your driver of the day? Um, I mean, it could go to any of the top four, to be honest. I think they've all had a really good race. Um, Diamond did a fantastic job to keep his race, uh, to, to get the race win. Callum did great to keep it there as well. But um, I, think, I think I've got to give it to my fellow Stokey Locker. Um, you know, he, he definitely didn't have, didn't have the pace um, and we didn't expect him to see on the podium with the faster drivers ahead of him. So to, to get P2 is a fantastic result for the Aston Martin drivers. So um, yeah, congratulations, Locker. There we go. He's only saying it because you're still here. <laughs> if, if, someone, <laughs> Probably. If, if someone else is still in the party, there's no way you'd be the driver. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> But no, thank you for that, TJ. And once again, join us tomorrow for the Tier 1 boys taking us around their second race of the season at the same track 